Hi everybody, this week we're looking at the Ocul Collimator. Here we go, this is my 130 PDS from Skywatcher that you can see here. And I've set up a kind of test jig, so I've got a table here which is on its side and I've got a light there to illuminate the inside of the scope which will be here, screwdriver there. And there's just a white piece of paper to illuminate. And if I take off the cover here, inside what we've got is a folded piece of paper, which is there. So if I was to turn on my light, so I've got the two lights illuminating. And what the collimator actually does, it's a small video camera, and it allows you to use concentric circles and also crosshairs to align both mirrors perfectly. And on my PDS, I've got the Bob's Knobs adjusters there. I've also got a screwdriver here if I need to adjust the center uh, screw, which is in there. And on the other end, it's just as per a normal 130 PDS. So I'll switch on the PC and we'll have a go at trying to collimate. What do you get in the box? Well, you get a nice little sort of box like this, which is uh, quite good. And inside there was a USB lead which came in a nice neat plastic bag. Then on the front of the camera there was a camera protector so this was screwed onto the front and then it came with two different adapters. The one which I'm using is a one and a quarter inch adapter which is currently screwed in there and it's going to the inside of my telescope. And then the other one I'm not too sure about. This one actually looks a bit like a two inch adapter um, it's threaded and it looks like it will actually screw onto some types of focuses. In addition to that, there is a little USB adapter. So it goes from a USB-A to a USB-C, which allows it to be used with a mobile phone. Because this also not only has a PC app, but it has a phone app as well. And that's what comes in the box. This is the software for the Ocal Collimator. What you have to do is install the software from the website and I just created a folder called Ocal and in there there is another folder here Ocal Electronic Collimator. You go in there and then you have three folders. The only one you need really is the one in the middle. And then what you have to do in order to calibrate your individual ocals. They all come with a serial number on the back of the ocal and also on the box. That serial number there. And what you have to do is input the calibration data into a file called focus. So in this file it opens up in notepad and what you have to do is replace this data here. Now the data that you have to replace it with is available on their, their website and you basically download this Excel file and then you use your serial number. So my one is this one. So 417 at the end. So let's find 417. Here we go. So 417, you copy that data there and then back in your file down here, you have to paste it into this file called focus. And then once you've done that, you save it back, replacing it. And that's the calibration data for your particular OCL. And that's really important because without that, the unit won't actually be calibrated. Once you've got it calibrated, you simply set it up by plugging it in. And you plug it into your USB socket, which we have here. And then we can open the software. That's the application there. This is the control panel that you get with the Ocal software. And what it enables you to do is connect to the camera. So if I turn on the camera and you can see the white paper that we've set up illuminated here. Now, if you use the scroll wheel on your mouse, you will be able to zoom in, which is really important. So it allows you to get very accurate views of what's actually going on on the screen. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger as well. There we go. On this side, you've got the ability to add different circles. So if I click on circle one, just here, 
and then use the circle size, bring it down a bit, you should see a green circle appear. Now if I zoom out slightly, there we go. What I need to do, first of all, is check that this is all central. So I need to align this green circle with this outside edge of the actual focus tube on the telescope. So I'm going to do that now. So I just click on there and then I just gently increase the size of the circle until it lines up perfectly. There we go. I'm also going to use the center offset because you can see here that it's not quite lining up to the base there and it's not quite lining up to the top there. So I'm just going to use the center offset and then I'm going to change the offset so it lines up so you can see you can move it up and down. So I'm just going to move it up slightly. There we go, that's now perfectly aligned, which is great. So now I'm going to add another circle. So I'm going to add a second circle, which I'm going to line up with the mirror itself. Now you can see this is the actual mirror, the secondary mirror inside the telescope. And you can see this part of the mirror here. And I just want to check that this part of the mirror is within the next circle. So I'll get the red circle this time. Now I have to make it a bit smaller. There we go, there's the red circle. And then I'll just make it a bit bigger again. There we go. Now you can actually see that that is almost correct. It's almost right. There's some of the mirror on this side and this little bit of the mirror there. So I could actually adjust the mirror itself to be in exactly the right position. But I'm going to leave it just for now because I think that's almost perfect. So I'm just going to leave that for now. And then what I want to do is add a third circle to go around the actual main mirror on the inside here. So I'm going to add another circle and then make it smaller. There's the blue circle this time. So let's make that smaller and check that the actual reflection of the primary mirror is in the right place. Now you can see it's slightly low because of the line here. I'm just going to adjust and you'll see my hand inside going in front of the telescope as we adjust this. Okay, I think that's absolutely spot on now. I'm really pleased with that. I think that the secondary mirror now is perfectly aligned. So now I'm going to adjust the blue circle to go around the center circle here. And then we can use the adjustments on the primary mirror to align that perfectly. So we have a perfect donut shape going around. So I'm now going to adjust the blue circle so it lines up. So now what I have to do is adjust it so that is perfectly central. So now I'm adjusting the primary mirror. I think that's spot on in the middle. Oh no, it's slightly off still. There we go, I've adjusted the primary mirror now to align the blue circle perfectly in the center. So what I'm going to do now is add the crosshairs so that we can check whether it is perfectly aligned in the mirror. And you can see here that we've now got the exact center aligned. In addition to that, we've got the perfect alignment for the donut shape. We've then got the mirror right in the middle as well. And then we've got the actual focus tube straight in the middle as well. Now I think that's pretty much fully collimated. Now, I, when I first tried this before I made the video, I found that my secondary mirror was really low and I had to adjust it so it was higher. Now I don't think I've got it 100% perfectly set up there. You can actually see there's a little bit of the mirror at the top there going round and it's a bit round there. But the actual reflection of the primary mirror is spot on in the middle and I think it is perfectly in line with the actual focusing tube as well. So I'm going to give that a go and if I need to adjust the actual physical height and angle of the secondary mirror then I'll have to try that on perhaps on some stars or on some images. When you first set it up as well it's really important if you look at these settings that you have a look at the camera settings as well. 
Now, in the camera settings which appear up here, you can control things such as the brightness, contrast, hue, etc. And also under camera control, you've got various settings as well. One particularly important one, which I note, was the focus. So you can adjust this focus here, and it will change the focus point of the camera. So if I just adjust this now, and you'll notice that the camera changes its focus. So I'm just adjusting it back and forth, and you can see you can get different points of focus on the actual tube itself and on the camera, which is really good. To zoom in, you have to use your mouse wheel to zoom in, so you can see I'm zooming in and out like that. However, for some reason, with this I don't quite understand, the zoom control here is greyed out and doesn't do anything, and likewise with these. So I wonder whether those are for perhaps um, a different product in the future, or maybe something to do with controlling this again differently in the future. One thing that is interesting though, and I noticed that when I zoomed in fully, you can actually see quite accurately how well you are collimated. Now, that actually shows that there's quite a lot of a gap on this side, just up here. So even though I thought it was properly collimated, I could probably tweak it even further to make it a little bit more accurate. There we go. So it is, it is an interesting exercise using this tool to make sure that your scope is properly, properly to make sure your scope is properly collimated. Um, but that's not too bad. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit further, and let's see. See, it looks fine like that, and then when you actually zoom in you realise that you could be more accurate, which is quite interesting. So that was the Ocal Collimation Tool. It works on most types of mirror-based telescopes, and I also managed to do it with my classical Cassegrain telescope, which was great because I knew it needed collimating, and I've now got it absolutely spot on. So that's really useful to know. I hope this was useful. Thanks ever so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.